Hi there. Here's a topic video looking at the analysis of a price fixing cartel within an oligopoly. So a cartel is basically any formal agreement between firms. So key firms within an industry may, may come together to form a cartel, a collusive agreement. And who knows what they're going to agree on? They could agree to fix the price. That's often the case. They could even agree to fix the output. They could share the market out, allocate customers, allocate geographical territories. They could agree not to compete with each other on certain bids. They could divide the profits up. Anyway, in any way, shape or form, a cartel is a collusive agreement between firms. And of course, under EU and UK competition law, cartels are illegal. Now, how does the analysis diagram work? Well, here's, an, here's a way of showing it. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the industry demand and costs. And the cartel, if it's sufficiently big part of the industry, they will try to set quite a high price, a profit maximizing price, P1. Don't forget the aim of the cartel, the main aim, is to achieve a level of joint profits similar to that which might be achieved by a pure monopoly. So profit maximizing price, P1. That then becomes the cartel price, the fix, if you like. Each cartel member, this is going to be firm A on the right-hand side here. Each cartel member is a price taker, effectively. I'm going to put some cost curves in. So you can see there's firm A's costs. So they will they will take the price. Now, the key to this is how, how the cartel works. By the way, the x-axis on these two separate diagrams are not the same. The scale is different. So Q1 will be the industry supply. They're going to fix the supply at Q1. They may then choose to allocate an output quota for each firm. So your firm A, you're in the cartel, you have to price at P1, and they say, right, here's your quota. You want to produce 50,000 tonnes of cement. That's your quota. Stick to it. Pardon the pun. So at P1, there's your quota. Well, we can work out the average cost. Cost is here. And if you produce... This quota, there's your cost, there's your price, and this firm can make a super normal profit. It's, it's charging the cartel price and making some profit. Now, in theory, in theory, the cartel as a whole maximizes joint profits. But can you see the problem? Although this firm is making some profit at price P1, can you see that there's a potential here for making a little bit more profit? If you could just increase that output a little bit, and uh, their cost will be lower, the way the cost curves have been shaped. In theory, of course, if they decided to cheat on the quota, let's say they double their output more or less to here, well, if they're selling at the cartel price at P1, they could make a lot more profit, a lot more profit. Let's go back a slide. That's the profit with the cartel. That's the profit by cheating, by overproducing, and maybe just undercutting the price a little bit, offering a little discount or a hidden discount. Uh, you can increase output and may raise your profits. Now, here's the really key point. Although the cartel maximizes joint profits, it doesn't maximize individual profits. Individual profit is there. If they cheated, they can make some more money. And of course, if everybody cheats, if everybody overproduces, oversupplies, the total industry supply will be much higher than Q1, and that will in theory, depress the cartel price and actually threaten the actual stability of the cartel. That's one of the big dilemmas within a price-fixing cartel. Do you stick to the agreement, keep the price high, or do you cheat or renege on the agreement, increase your supply and overproduce? Collusion is easier when the industry regulators are pretty weak or ineffective. A sort of regulatory failure can let cartels slip by. Uh, collusion is easier when the penalties for collusion are relatively low compared to the gains in revenue and the, 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 maybe the higher profits. Quite a few examples. If you Google cartel price fixing, fine. You'll find lots of good examples of fines running into the tens of millions of dollars or euros or pounds. But actually, when you compare the fine, let's say you've got a 50, 50 million euro fine, you compare it with their revenue, I don't know, 500 million euros or the profits, half a million pounds, whatever it is, the, the, the fine compared to the revenue and the profits can be tiny. It's easy to collude when the penalties are pretty low. Collusion is easier also, point three, when the, uh, the participating firms have a higher percentage of the market. So 
the more the big firms are in there, the easier it is to control the market supply. Crucial point four is really crucial, particularly if you want to really get into the skin of a cartel. Cartels are more stable when the firms within the cartel communicate well, how much are they producing, transparency, and crucially, they trust each other. Social capital is important. And they have similar strategic objectives. So the breakdown in many ways of some cartels in the past and the tensions within OPEC, for example, are about businesses having different st strategic objectives, causing tension in the cartel. Two of the points, cartels are easier when the product is standardised, fairly homogenous, like oil or cement or whatever, wheel nuts, okay? I don't know if there is a cartel in wheel nuts, but there should be. And it's also easier when output is measurable, because of course, if you go back to your cartel diagram, you've got to be able to measure the output and see if there's any cheating going on. And finally, a cartel is probably easier when the brand is strong. When, when you have a series of very strong brands, which consumers are loath to change their spending patterns, which makes it easier for the cartel to raise the price. OK, so we've been through the analysis of a cartel uh, in a separate topic video. We'll think about why cartels break down, because they often do. A uh, bit of game theory coming up, and we'll also look at the costs and benefits of a cartel. Thank you.